I watched every single anime from the winter 2024 season, and here are some of the best ones worth watching. Last season was one of the best one of this decade, we had Freeran, which is somehow still the highest rated anime of all time, The Apothecary Diaries, which showed us how to write a good female character, and many many more. However, this season is just as stacked, featuring some of the most anticipated anime adaptations in quite a long time. Maybe it will be even better than last season. Uh, never mind, this season is doomed. A Sign of Affection is a romance that I've been hearing about for years, praised for its amazing and well-written storyline, and I've been craving to read it, but I'm lazy as fuck. And then, I'm regretting it because the anime is amazing. However, I made a severe mistake while watching it. Okay, there is no way she can't hear him. Girl, are you deaf or some... Oh shit. I made a huge mistake and I would like to apologize. In this anime, we follow Yuki, a hearing impaired student, and Itsomi. One day, they meet on a train and Itsomi helps her out. Yuki is surprised by how, despite her disability, he doesn't treat her differently attempting to communicate with her in a way that makes it easier for her. After they part ways, she becomes curious about him and wants to know more. What really made this romance unique for me, aside from the character design? Have you ever really noticed anime characters don't really have noses? Anyway, I really love that it has this serious, somewhat mature vibe to it. It offers a nice and realistic experience of how people find each other, slowly connecting and opening up. It's been such a long time since I watched a romance with adult characters, making it a breath of fresh air. What is not a breath of fresh air though, is gushing over magical girls. If you ever wanted to watch an anime about a cat-like creature blackmailing a high school girl to dress up in revealing clothing and fight other high school girls, then this is your anime. But if this is too much for you, we also have Chain Soldier, where our main character accidentally teleports into an alternate dimension, gets saved by some cute girls, with too many people to save, they separate, and alone she cannot defend them all. So she does the most logical thing. Suck on my fingers, boy. Be my slave. He turns into a CGI monster and saves everyone, even receives an award at the end. However, if that is still too much etchy for you, there's also Tales of Wedding Rings, and this one is surprisingly average, yet entertaining. There is really nothing special about it, we have two main characters, the girl is a princess from another world, where she return after 10 years, and the other main character follows her, where she chooses to marry him, and he becomes the ring king. It's a classic isekai story, but the girls look borderline naked, even when it doesn't make sense. Dungeon Meshi is one of the best fantasy anime from this season, featuring another autistic elf and some others. The story follows a guild that was wiped out, and the remaining members embark on a quest to explore a dangerous dungeon filled with monsters and traps. Their goal is to rescue a team member who has been captured by a dragon, all while having to survive by cooking and eating the creatures they encounter. When I first read its synopsis and saw that it's animated by Trigger, I was really confused because it just didn't sound that interesting to me. However, I actually really enjoyed it. The anime has a good mix of storytelling and comedy, keeping you engaged throughout the whole episode. I mean, how you can say no to this autistic elf and this juicy food animation? If you ever watched Shield Hero and there is one thing you could change about it, what would it be? Exactly, the characters. Well, this season, we have the wrong way to use healing magic and we get all the usual stuff, or main character is insanely average. The enemy spends two minutes listing all the things he's average at. His dreams, his grades, his... He gets teleported into another world with other people where the king is forcing these heroes to save the country from the demon king. However, our main character isn't even supposed to be there at all, but they find out that he actually has a super rare supportive power. The first episode is really stereotypical, everything happens the way you expect it, but at least it 
Does it well. It is really similar to Shield Hero, but the characters act a lot more rationally. For example, they don't just agree to have the king, they actually question why they should. Everyone seems friendly and not judgmental. The king doesn't just abandon him after figuring out he isn't supposed to be there, and I really like that. One that I didn't like at all though is Ishuro. But let me just explain why. You know, the Demon King died, and there are these heroes, and. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. And we also have the unwanted undead adventurer, which was kinda. Me, 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 me. Yet, I really like the idea of it. It's basically a skeleton grinding 24 7 to become stronger and stronger. Really basic, yet, I was really invested in it. <laughs> Why are you gay? The Witch and the Beast is one of the most awaited enemy adaptation, and the first episode didn't disappoint me at all. We follow Gaido and Dashaf, two individuals looking for a witch to undo a curse, and so far, that's what the story seems to be. It's simple and straightforward, and I like the way they executed it. You won't instantly have a clear idea of who is good and who is bad, and it has a really good way of making you question that throughout the whole episode. The bigger question for me now is what direction will it take? Will it become an episodic anime, where they try to find the right witch, or is there more depth to it. Anyway, after discussing so many gory anime, let's shift gears and talk about some cute ones. We have Fluffy Paradise, where our main character ends up in another world after dying from overwork. God blesses her with a special ability, and she chooses the power to be allowed to cuddle cute animals. That's all the anime is about. Cute dogs, a cute white tiger, a cute dragon. But if you don't want a purely cute anime, how about a scary cute one? Mr. Villain's Day Off is about a general who starts with invading Earth and wiping out humanity. However, even someone like him needs a chance to rest. So on those days, no evil deeds. Instead, he will visit pandas, buy ice cream, buy panda merch, help people who want to kill him, watch panda documentaries. He really likes pandas. However, we also have a weird cute one, where a princess is held captive by the Demon Lord's army, and she's getting tortured by making food in front of her? I genuinely thought there was more to it, but nope, that's it. Exactly 4 years ago, thanks to Crunchyroll, we got free adaptation of some of the most popular manhwa. They were supposed to be the best of the best, but let's just say they all failed to stand out, ruining the chance to see another manhwa adaptation up until now. Because now, we finally have solo leveling. The first episode was really simple, just setting up the world and introducing some of the characters. It's set in a world where portals connected to a dimension filled with monsters and creatures. We follow Sanjin Wu, an E-rank hunter, considering the weakest of the weak. He isn't even really considered a hunter, he can barely defeat the weakest enemies and usually just holds back all the other hunters. However, one day everything changes forever. As someone who hasn't read it, the first episode was slightly disappointing, but that is probably because just my expectations were way too high too early on. I'm just really happy to see another manhwa adaptation after such a long time. <laughs> This enemy is exactly what I expected, yet surprisingly good. I generally thought it was going to be another Nagatoro or Uzaki-chan scenario where a girl bullies an awkward guy. And while this enemy is somewhat like that, Minami is actually really nice. She genuinely seems to care about Tsubasa and wants to help him whenever she can. She's not rude or anything like we are used to, and I really like that. However, we might have an even better romance between a 30-year-old virgin and his co-worker. I'm not making fun of him, that's the title, okay? Thinking about it, I don't think I ever watched the Yaoi, but this was actually really entertaining and funny. The characters have a good dynamic really early on, and they are just really, really cute. <laughs> I don't know exactly when it happened, but it seems like traditional Isekai has been completely replaced by this villainous type anime. There are just so many of them every season, however, I really like this one. Seven Time Loop is about a girl who has been reborn seven times, living a different kind of life, but dying every single time after five years. I really liked the way the first episode was paced, yet I was really entertained learning about her past life and what she went through so far. However, now that she has been reborn for the seventh time, this time she chooses a different pet and runs into the very same person who killed her in her last life, marrying him. The one thing I found really funny though, is how we have all these cool character names like 
Imgard Westner Risch, August Hein Theodor, Friedim Oliver Lawrence, and then the brutal evil emperor, Arnold. Fucking Arnold. But talking about traditional isekais, we have Sasaki to Pichan. We got a 40 minute long premiere for this one, and it was absolutely needed because the first half can be quite boring. However, it picks up in pace quite quickly as he buys a bird from another world. With his bird, he becomes a stock trader, selling items from one world to another. Also learns how to use magic, and thanks to that eventually he gets forced into a state job, creating a pretty unique dynamic. It was definitely one of the most enjoyable enemies so far. Despite its basic and kind of boring story, it was definitely one of the most enjoyable enemies so far for me. However, it had just one problem. Please don't make the 14 year old a love interest, please don't, please don't, please don't, please don't. I know they are going to do it. If there is one anime though, I don't know what to say about, it has to be Metallic Rogue. A really good looking anime coming from Bones with some really sick character designs. But it's really hard to tell what is going on at all. I liked what I seen, but it didn't really make a lot of sense. It has mecha, fighting, cool characters, that's all you need to know. However, it's not even the only original from this season. We also have Buchigiri from Mappa, and I felt in a really similar way of not really knowing what's going on, but it has been amazing so far. It's really random in a sense. We got Arachin, a really normal guy who transferred to a new school field with quite a lot of strange people. The anime had a heavy focus on comedy and fighting without a lot of explaining of the story itself. But it was really fun. Like his mom is cute, the fights look amazing, but then you get a scene like this. For this season, these were all the anime that was worth watching for me. I hope there is at least one you will enjoy from this season, and if you want to see one of the best anime from last season, click on this video. Goodbye!